Audience is now listening to the list critics. <laughs> what was that like a THX thing or? Yep. Oh, okay, <laughs> that was amazing. I love it. Uh, you know what I've been yep. doing with my with my nephew? Um, I go, hey Bobby, hey yo, and he'll try to do it as long as I can. But if I, I go like three times as long as mm-hmm. him, he doesn't understand yeah, give, how I give can him do a, it. Give him a decade, he may beat you. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, because then I'll be in my forties and he'll be a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start, as we always do, with Pleated Jeans. Tumblr gets deep, 21 of these. So um, uh, number 21 here, Jelly Bean Machine posted, I work at an art store, and we have tester pads out for pens and markers. Sometimes p- people put in way too much time into their doodles, and then there's this beautifully cursed image. And it shows uh, somebody drew uh, Kylo Ren, but, like, like with his shirt off, like in Episode Eight, like, you know, Ben Swolo. Ugh. And he's like got a he's taking a selfie and it's like hi welcome to Chili's. <laughs> wow, it's <laughs> a funny. <laughs> you know Ray was checking him out. Of course. She's like, oh, could you put something on? <laughs> Number twenty, uh, sketchbooking says, wasn't I Carly that guy with the wax wings that flew to? Oh God, are you kidding me? Wasn't I Carly that guy with the wax wings that flew into the sun and fucking got rest because same. What? He's talking about Icarus. From Greek mythology. Yeah, I I know that, but I'm still trying to figure it out. So then he replies and says, I just realized my phone corrected Icarus to iCarly because I type iCarly more than Icarus. Okay, thanks. And uh, Pumpkin Spice DNP says, I thought this was just a god-tier shitpost. That's what I thought at first, too. Same here. iCarly flew too close to the sun. Uh, all right, number 19. Pumpkin Leaf says, New urban fantasy theory. Walmart hires vampires. This explains why it's open 24 hours a day, why working there is often described as soul-sucking, and why there's almost no wi- always no windows. Most damningly, Walmart is one of the few stores that specifically hires a greeter with no other job than to welcome every person into the store, because vampires have to be invited in. Shit. Okay. Well, I could burst the bubble, or I could add to the bubble. What should I do? Yes. Okay. So if I was to burst the bubble, I would point out that the greeter's main job is actually to make sure you're not stealing anything. Pretty much. And if I was to add to the bubble, I would just point to that South Park episode about Walmart where you have to shatter a mirror to destroy it. (laughs) Mm. Okay, number 18, Nislo says, Shark, Lava, and Boy Girl. Like that movie, I guess. And Mooptria draws that, a lava shark and a boy girl. (laughs) And it says, definitely cooler than those other two. So was it a photo of, like, RuPaul or something like that? No, it's it's (laughs) it's like a drawing of, like like, a boy in a superhero outfit, but it has, like, a skirt. Oh, so. Looks like Mark from Roseanne's all grown up already. Oh, oh, I was I was just about to say, dude, not cool. Mark, like, died, but then I realized you meant Darlene's son. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he seems like an interesting kid. Did you, uh, did you, did you see the episode tonight? Because I haven't seen it yet, so don't spoil anything, because I know David's uh-uh. in it. It's Aaron right now as we're, as we're okay, doing this. Okay, because I'll stream it tomorrow. Yeah, same here. Because I, I, I was like, okay, I got to know about David. I got to know, and then I saw him in the preview, and I'm like, holy shit. I... I've been lucky to avoid it so far. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, number 17, Just Shower Thought says, Why do Germans use smiles like this or like this? Like, so one's like the like the normal smiley face and the other's like the open mouth. If they already got like the umlaut U and the umlaut O, which actually do look like smiles when you think of it that way. And uh, eight housekeep- oh, a light housekeeper says, I just texted my German friend about this and she replied, We do not smile in Germany. Shit. <laughs> that's, that's a good reply. Mm-hmm. And I knew a German girl once, and she smiled, so I don't think that's a thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, I had a, there was a German foreign exchange student in high school that was in my uh, science class. She was smiling all the time. Was she hot? Extremely. Yeah, the girl, the German girl that I knew, that was in college, and, and she, was, she was smoking hot. Uh, writing, prompt S, uh, writing prompt says, your Tumblr username describes your profession. 
how was your first day at work? And uh, <laughs> slavery replies with just a his Tumblr username, which is slavery. Oh. So he just posts a picture of himself crying. Ain't that some shit? That's not a yeah, not a good profession to have. Okay, so uh, number number fifteen shows a um, a timeline of Richard Nixon's signatures, and you know, uh, from 1968 to 1974. 1968, it's very legible and it gets more like a squiggle. And 1974, it was basically just a line at that point. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is uh, Peter from Texas as a visual history of Richard L- Nixon getting lazier. And Tomlinson says, Nixon bots throw the ages. Number one, Richard Nixon or Prime Nixon. Number two, Richel Niff. Number three, Pin Hiff. And number four, four. It does look like a four. The thing that's like, it's like a line. It does look like a stretched out number four. <laughs> like somebody was trying to draw like an eight or something like that? No, like they were trying to draw a four, but like there was an earthquake going on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> number 14. Here's writing prompts again. Uh, uh, you have the power to heal others. You are a villain. And Magus of the Will says, I am the American healthcare system. Ouch. Applause. I like it. Have you ever seen the writing prompts, Tumblr? Basically, they give you like like the, the, the uh, one sentence premise for something that you're supposed to write and then you're supposed to elaborate on it. It's pretty interesting. I... I haven't seen it. I try and avoid Tumblr like the plague in all honesty. Oh, you know, Tumblr's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, the common chick says, High school was so judgy, but in college, you see someone riding past on a Razor scooter wearing a Snuggie, and it's like, that is a smart man. <laughs> it's true. He, he's going to law school. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> number 12... This shows an interview. I don't know what show it is, but you have Harrison Ford and, and uh, Adam Driver. Of course, they they played Han Solo and Ben Swallow. And, uh, and uh, Harrison Ford saying, okay, I got a jo- joke for you, kid. Knock, knock. And then Adam Driver just says, come in. And uh, <laughs> Harrison Ford looks quite dismayed by that. And uh, Twitchy Tyron says, I can't believe he killed Harrison Ford twice. Ouch. Spoiler alert from a movie from several years ago, by the way, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is that right after The Force Awakens came out, like, it was like a week after. I had seen it, but it was, like, just a few days, you know? And I was streaming on Twitch, and I was playing a game. I think it was Civilization or something, because it was on Steam. And then all of a sudden, you know how, like, when you're on Steam, like, somebody comes up that they're playing a game, there'll be that little pop-up? Yeah. Somebody on my buddy list had changed their name to Han Solo Dies. And this popped up on my screen as I'm streaming to on Twitch to all these people. And I'm just like, oh, sorry about that. I can't control that. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm, I'm... Uh, half the people had already seen the movie and the other half didn't care. So That's usually a good combination. Uh, speaking of which, this shows, uh, number 11 shows a, 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 an anime or something in it, and it's just these characters saying, did you get good grades? No, but I don't care. And uh, Queen Nubian Deactivated says, college. Pretty much. Yeah. No, but I don't care. Boy, this this one's got a lot of words to it. So, uh, Hal, Hal, Holly Regina says, okay, now that I finally quit Denny's, let me tell you guys about the bizarre fucking other world it is. The music and the room temperature are controlled by corporate. Corporate plays a lot of pop covers of Disney princess songs I've never heard before. I now have a dance routine to the K-pop sounding version of Let It Go. Our sign flickered fast and red and demonically for a week, and the repairman said he couldn't find anything wrong with it. People did drug deals in, like, broad daylight in the middle of the parking lot multiple times a week. Well, that's what I assume happens in a Denny's parking lot, right? Yeah. Um... It's open 24-7. We had a backup generator none of us knew about until there was a massive storm one night, and we looked out to see a tree knocked over, and our lights the only thing on for miles. You could weather the apocalypse with no idea the apocalypse was even happening. Regular customers included, a man convinced that the chemtrails are real who gave me six separate pieces of literature on the subject, a little person named Kevin who told me sometimes I call myself a dwarf when I'm feeling whimsical, an actual group of neo-Nazis, an actual Earth, Wind, and Fire cover band they played for us, 
Twins who came in separately on the same day, and I thought they were one woman changing outfits rapidly for the longest time. A Scottish landscaper who told us we couldn't prove he doesn't know Simon Pegg. I have more of these. These are just off the top of my head. And then they replied, saying, I can't believe I forgot. Two line cooks got into a really heated argument about whether Vin Diesel is bisexual or not. And I asked an elderly man if he wanted to use the AARP discount, and he said, no, I am not a socialist. What kind of answer is that? The whole thing just went over my head, but I'm going to go ahead and raise a finger up just I, for the hell of it. I mean, this is just like the weird shit going on at Denny's. I just, I, I'm not a big Denny's fan, and most people are like, oh, how could you talk shit on Denny's? And I'm like, because I'm from Pennsylvania, and we have Perkins. I don't know if you, have you ever, you've been through Pennsylvania. Have you ever been to a Perkins, Payton? Yes, I love Perkins. I mean, for anybody out there who doesn't know the joys of Perkins, they're almost all in Pennsylvania and New York. It's basically a Denny's with a bakery. Pretty much. It's like it has all the same things that you would get in any, you know, like Denny's or IHOP and everything, except they also have, like, pies and shit. It's amazing. Okay, number nine. Fart Gallery says, Starbucks Barista. I've got a Cafe Mocha for Russian Spy? Everybody remains seated and eyes each other suspiciously. Barista throwing his CIA badge in the floor in defeat. Damn it, I thought for sure that would work. Jeez. And, and lesbian theory of value replies and says, memes that are funny in 2018 and 1958. <laughs> oh man, when you come to think of it, we've kind of come full circle in that Russian spy thing. Except instead of like... Uh, you know, badass super spies like the spy who loved me. It's more like uh, some knob hacker like in uh, that Warcraft episode of South Park. Yep. All right. Hmm. Number eight, Avocado Toast says, I think the most Gemini thing my dad has ever done. Oh, God, I hate this person so much. The most Gemini thing my dad has ever done in, is one year he threw himself a reverse surprise party for the sheer drama of it. What is a reverse surprise party, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. So he invites over all his friends and family, and then in the middle of dinner, he stands up and announces that it's not a regular dinner. It is, in fact, his birthday dinner. His exact words were, surprise, it's my birthday. Cue everyone looking panicked because, oh God, I didn't have a gift. I didn't even have a card. But my father, wine glass still in hand, assures them not to worry and reveals a pile of presents he got for himself and wrapped for everyone to pick one and give it to him as their gift. And honestly, my father is such a legend. Well, it certainly makes buying a gift for someone easier if they buy it themselves, right? That's weird. That's it is I'm weird. Say. I mean, like, I get that, like, that it makes a good story, and that's probably why he did it, but that is just strange. I guess anything for the story, right? Pretty much. Number seven, on... On Bastan says, okay, so today I was on the bus with another trans guy, and we were talking about how hard it is to get testosterone. The waiting list, the price, all the doctors you have to go to, that kind of stuff. Except we were <laughs> we were calling it tea, like you do when you're both closeted and in public. I think I know where this is going. Oh, then yeah. suddenly, the elderly lady sitting behind us was like, young men, either I'm going crazy or you both have never heard of supermarkets. They have shelves full of tea there. Do you need directions to one? can't even continue. <laughs> to which my buddy starts to explain, because why not? Well, you see, we're both trans, and the lady didn't wait for him to finish his sentence. Oh, no, I don't mind all that. Now, do you want to know how to get a place that sells tea? I'm actually headed there now. We let her take us to the supermarket. We let her show us excitedly where the tea was. We both bought loads. <laughs> oh, they tried to correct her, but she wasn't hearing it. She's like, I don't care that you're trans. I'll show you where the tea is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a nice old lady, too. Yeah. Oh, and... God. That's amazing. All right, number six. Congratulations says, just precisely how bad was 1500s Jerusalem at making maps, you ask? Well, so they show this map that was apparently made in Jerusalem in the 1500s, and it just basically looks like a central dot, that's Jerusalem, with three leaf-shaped land masses coming out mm -hmm. of it, uh, which are marked Asia, Africa, and Europa. And that's the whole world, according to them. <laughs> so Science as Fuck replies with, this is a fidget spinner. And Guitar Goat says, reblog if you believe in fidget spinner Earth. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's great, I love it. 
Okay, so uh, Jerry Swag here, number five, uh, posts a, a picture of... Um... <laughs> okay, it's not in English, but it doesn't need to be. It shows an iron, which is uh, labeled as hierro, which is, which is uh, Spanish for an iron, 200 degrees Celsius. El Sol, which is the sun, 5,505 degrees Celsius. Quasar, which is obviously a, a neutron star, mm. uh, 10 billion degrees Celsius. And then esta cosa un verano, which is the, the metal slide, and it's like 10 quadrillion degrees. Jeez. Uh, you know, when you're a kid, you go to that thing, it is like hotter than the sun. So. Uh, oh, Ra I, Ravings I, Random posts this and says, this meme transcends language. I believe it. It's true. You don't have to speak Spanish or any language. If you've ever been down a hot metal slide on a summer day while wearing shorts, you know. Hell, there was this, uh, mm -hmm. at uh, Robert's Cavern, they've got a rock slide where you literally slide down a mountain that's right, like, it's just at an angle where you'll hold on, uh -huh. but it's a slide, and it burns your ass so bad, like... Wouldn't that kill you? Like, wouldn't that, like, just take your skin right off? Uh, luckily I was wearing jeans, but I still felt that burn. Wow, I can imagine. Holy shit. Whoa, this has got some words, too. This is a list within a list. Uh, number four, uh, Satan Bird here posts this... No, I'm sorry, it's T-Boot. It says, humans are adorable, supporting evidence, and then it's a list of 12 things. I guess I'll read uh -oh. them. Uh, number one, humans say ow, even if they haven't actually been hurt. It's just a thing they say when they think they might have been hurt, but aren't sure yet. Guilty as charged. That's true. Uh, two, humans collect shiny things and decorate their bodies and nest with them. The shinier, the better, although each individual has a unique taste for style and coloring. Three, humans are not an aquatic or even amphibious species, but they flock to bodies of water simply to play in it. They can't even hold their breath all that long. They just love to splash. <laughs> Number four, when night falls and the sky goes dark, humans become drowsy and begin to cocoon themselves in soft, fluffy bedding. Number five, some humans spend time in each other's nests, just for fun. It's not their nest. They're just visiting each other. Number six, some humans use pigments and dyes to make their bodies flashy and colorful. They even attach shiny, dangly bits to their cartilage cartilaginous membranes. That's That would be your ears, by the way. Yeah. Uh, number seven, humans are very clear and sometimes adopt creatures from other species into their family units. They don't seem to notice the obvious differences and often raise them alongside their own young. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about pets. I love it. Number eight, if a human sees another creature in distress, they can commonly be observed trying to help. Even at their own risk, most humans are deeply compassionate creatures. Number nine, if a human hears a particularly catchy sound or tune, it will often mimic it, even to the point of annoying themselves. Number ten, sneezes are entirely involuntary and completely adorable, especially when the human in question becomes frustrated. Number eleven, humans love treats, some more than others. Some humans will save these treats specifically for a later date when they are in need of comfort or reassurance, i.e. pickles, pop-tarts, popsicles, etc. And number twelve, they're learning to travel in space. They can't get very far, but they're trying. So far, they've made it to the end of their yard and have found rocks. <laughs> I think they're talking about the moon there. Uh, and then uh, Shakespeare replies, but this sounds as if it was written by a really enthusiastic alien humanologist. Or Jordan I... Schlansky, either way. Some like that. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out if you get the Jordan Schlansky reference, anybody. That was cute. I enjoyed it. Number three, uh, Damn Africa. Oh, sometimes I just ignore a non-hate because there's a proverb I learned in a Nigerian movie that said, you cannot run naked after a madman in the street after he has taken your clothes away from you because the public will not know who is the mad person between the two of you. That's amazing. Uh, I, I, there's a reply, but I just have to pause to say that's an amazing proverb. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Celtic Pyro replies with, I feel like this proverb was based on first-hand experience. Sometimes the best ones are. All of them should be. Okay, number two. So, um, uh, the, the big sister you never asked for post. Uh, Gisela Pearl was forced to work as a doctor in Auschwitz concentration camp during the Holocaust. She was ordered to report every pregnant woman to the physician Dr. Joseph Mangala, who would then use the women for cruel experiments before killing them. She saved hundreds of women by performing abortions on them before their pregnancy was discovered without having access to basic medical supplies. She became known as the Angel of Auschwitz. 
After being rescued from Bergen Belsen concentration camp, she tried to commit suicide but survived, recovered, and kept working as a gynecologist, delivering more than 3,000 babies. Uh, WebGirl34 replies to this saying, I want to nail this to the forehead of every anti-abortionist who uses the word Holocaust when talking about legal abortions. I think Tumblr went a little too deep on that one. Just a bit. That's a really fucking heavy thing. You're talking about abortions and, 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 and uh, concentration camps and shit. We're just trying to have a good time here. Now I'm fucking depressed. Like, I don't even, yeah, I don't even know what to You know, for and now. they should have put the cute human thing after that. Please. So or, or just not put this on the list at all. I gotta mm. knock off a lot of points for that. All right, well, finally, number one, uh, Seth Everman says, Don't worry, you're still in the early life part of your Wikipedia page. And uh, Halal Barbie posts like a, like a mock-up where it says, Number one, early life. Number two, declares himself emperor. And, uh... I make good choices, replies with, this is the positive version of this post. It is friendly and brings luck. Okay, well, out of 21, um, damn, that, 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 that one kind of fucked the whole shit up. Fucked up my whole I, vibe here. We're at 8 for me, so. I'm going to agree with you on that, actually. I'm going to agree with the 8. I was going to give it like a 12 or something, but then you said 8, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> that fuck that noise. All yeah, right. that that one just completely bummed me out. And now I'm depressed. And... Yeah. All right. Well, well, maybe some of these Twitter jokes will help us out because that Wait, was just, the human I'm... thing had me smiling, and then we we start talking about the Holocaust. When did that happen? I'm, I'm not not literally it's when like... did that happen, but like why? Like what are we doing here? Okay, 15 Twitter jokes everyone mm -hmm. should read. Number one. Hi, it's Abby Yup. Says releases helium filled heart balloon. You're free now, balloon. I'm a choke a bird. Jeez. <laughs> Do the balloons choke? I thought that was the, the Mylar balloons that choked the birds. I don't know. I I'm most of the time... i bird. Uh, number 14, Greg here posts, I like my water like I like my emotions. Bottled. That's right. not healthy. I get it. I, it I, I, mean, I, get, it, I get it, but it's not healthy. Well, yeah. Uh, number 13, Eden Dranger says, We're all so addicted to our phones until it actually rings. It's true, and your phone rings, you're like, oh, God, what now? All right, uh, Gender Stratocaster says, Actually, Jennifer, diamonds are a girl's best friend, so technically I slept with your second best friend. Damn. That's funny. Um, okay, so number 11 uh, posts a picture of a... Of, I don't understand the diagram here. It's like a guy, I guess, getting out of a plane that's like on fire and he's crawling along the floor because of the smoke mm -hmm. and it shows you know like two almost identical uh, diagrams and it says you know this one or this one and the only mm -hmm. difference is one of them has bugs on the floor and the other doesn't and uh, lee tissioni posts look for bugs or don't whatever what that's not very good um oh no she twittened it says my coworker who believes Jesus Christ was the immaculately conceived Son of God who rose from the dead can't believe it's Monday already. <laughs> All right, I chuckled. That's funny. I thought she was going to say can't believe it's not butter or something like that. That probably would have been funnier. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, number nine, not Sarah says me. Hey, Mom. Oh, haha, I get that all the time. What? Walking away from me. Just one of those faces, I guess. That's funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> number eight. So, what the fuck? So there's this, um, you know, like those things at playgrounds where the, it's like almost like a like a treehouse thing where they climb up and play in it. Yeah. And it it has this plaque that says "Learning Braille" and it has like the alphabet and the phrase "I feel good" and then like the part where you would run your hand under it to see what it feels like, right? Right. But the problem is it's so far off the ground that no kid is going to be able to reach that. So professional arborist says, if your blind child is nine feet tall, we're here to help. <laughs> <laughs> How would they know it's there? I don't know, dude. Good Lord. Okay, number seven. Tinker L says, always be yourself. A little less. A little less. There you go. That's accurate. It's not funny, but it's accurate. 
Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, number six, Ray here says, The canary looked up from the cage where it had pretended to die. The last of the miners had fled. Fools. The sweet, sweet coal was all his. Okay. All right, I'll give you the slow clap. That's all you get from me. Mm -hmm. Two of those were mine. <laughs> there you go. Uh, number five, the 24-hour virus getter says, Miss Connections, I was the guy in the Subaru listening to NPR. You were the river I briefly considered driving into. <laughs> okay. That's actually kind of funny. Uh, dark funny. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I like dark humor, though. Number four, RM here says, Socrates, dying. Plato, my dear pupil, I've always wanted to tell you something. Yes, my teacher. I often made sweet, sweet love to your mom. Now please take good care of my documents. And Plato at Socrates' funeral. Too bad he left us no writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Savage AF. I like it. <laughs> well, I mean, which is more savage? The one that like did that or the guy whose last words were, I fucked your mom. I mean, they're both savage. All right, number three, Gladstone posts, I've been diagnosed with narcissistic personality dis Oh, sorry, being diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder doesn't count if you're like ten times smarter and sexier than your therapist. All right. I get it. I ain't laughing, but I get it. Yeah, so do I. Number two, Beth and Alien posts, Saw eight vasectomy billboards on my four-hour road trip through Florida yesterday. It's like Florida knows what has to be done to Florida. <laughs> Not lately, it hasn't been. <laughs> I have never, ever in my life seen an ad on a billboard for vasectomies. Like, I guess there must be, like, a law about it, and Florida is like, fuck that, we're doing it. Surprisingly, I, with as much as I was in Florida the last few years... I never once see, saw a uh, visectomy uh, billboard. Yeah, maybe it's a specific part of Florida. I don't know. I drove Although this all... says a four-hour road trip. That's, you know, and they saw eight of them, so they saw two per hour. That's crazy. I don't know. Now, number one shows a picture of, it looks like a starfish sitting on a windowsill or something, just chilling. And it says, uh, Quinn Sutherland says, when your mom is late picking you up from Starfish Club. <laughs> All right. At a 15, I'm going to give it a, a 9. I'm at 8 again. 8 again. Well, 8 out of 15 is a lot better than 8 out of 21, right? Yeah. Okay, so th this is another list from Pleated Jeans that I have here, and it's 45 posts that will make you say, who the fuck wrote this? Oh, let's hear it. We need some we need some sunshine because I'm still depressed from what happened on Tumblr. <laughs> I know. Let's forget about that. All right. Well, number 45 uh, it says, The devil is working harder, but those little hairs are working harder. It is this picture of this bald fellow. Well, he, or he's got, like, really, really short hairs growing in. And mm -hmm. um, it looks like he's balancing a, a bottle cap on his head. You know, like a beer cap. Yeah. But when you zoom it in, you can see that the hairs are holding it up. What? That's, yeah, who the fuck wrote that is right. Number 44, ham is short for Hamantha. <laughs> what the fuck? Who wrote that? That's exactly the reaction you're supposed to have there. Okay, number 43, uh, Shakespeare quote of the day. An SSL error has occurred and made a secure and a secure connection to the server cannot be made. <laughs> and uh, Josh, your post, he was ahead of his time. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, number 42. You swerve to avoid a squirrel. Unknown to you, the squirrel pledges a life debt to you. In your darkest hour, the squirrel arrives. That shows a picture of a squirrel wearing medieval armor. What Sometimes the fuck, I'm a... man? <laughs> He's got a little shield and everything. Like, what? <laughs> is okay, it for... or is an actual photo? Yeah. It is an actual photo. Holy shit. You want to see it? Yes, please. Hold on, I'll send it to you. Uh, here. I'll send it to you on Skype. That's probably easiest. You're on your computer, right? Yeah. All right, there you go. Mm -hmm. One day, my only day off, and here I am. 
I just sent it to you. <laughs> that is cute. That is cute. Okay, number four uh, shows a picture of a kitten looking at a laptop screen. And there's these messages on it. It says, mm. hello, kitten. Hello, you stinky kitten. Go eat a mouse, ugly. And uh, the person posted, who is cyberbullying my son? <laughs> All right, I'm moving on. That's just Wow. Okay, so number 40 shows a uh, an extremely cropped out picture from uh, a porno of the lesbian variety. There's these two ladies, Ooh. and they are, uh, I mean, you only see your heads, but it's clear from the facial expressions and the positions that they're enjoying each other's company, you know? Yeah. And there's this cat in the corner just looking at them, just staring. And it says, I guess there's no chance you guys will change my cat litter, huh? Speaking of cat litter, i got to change mine whenever I get out of here. There you go. Uh, number 39. Yo, what the fuck? So it shows this kid, and he's sitting there, but he's sitting next to this poster. It's like an advertisement for some ice cream, and there's like these three girls enjoying it, laughing and smiling, and he's sitting there eating ice cream next to the advertisement. It looks like he's part of it. And it says, how it feels to listen to podcasts. Well, I hope you guys feel like you're enjoying life with us, enjoying these lists. So there you go. Thank you. Come again. Yeah. Number 38. Uh, uh, okay, so Pennsylvania here posts, who knows how to dismantle a security camera? And then they reply to themselves saying, everybody on here always acts like some criminal mastermind when in reality 40 of you guys told me to smash it with a rock and at least three told me to seduce it. What? <laughs> I love it. Wow. Ah, oh, God. Number 37. A polo shirt and the little logo is your dad crying. Oh. No, that's terrible. Number 36. Um, it, it says, ask your boyfriend what this is and write what he says in the comments. Uh-oh. And uh, somebody texted that and it says, I'm not your boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> Carla here says that's the answer I was looking for. It's one of those um those little tiny vibrators that look like a like a raindrop. Yeah. Yeah. Number thirty five, so uh Flea Mon Potter here says I had a dream that I drank forty liters of vodka, entered a horse race, and won. I should specify that I entered not as a jockey, but as a horse. And somebody else says, Were you physically a horse? Or were you a human entering as a horse? Did you have a jockey? And the original person says, I was a human entering as a horse. No jockey, just me running like the fucking wind. <laughs> That's a very strange, very strange dream. I've been having some strange dreams lately myself, so I can relate to that. Um, number 34, when you die but you remember you forgot to delete your hieroglyph history. <laughs> hieroglyph history. <laughs> it shows it's a sarcophagus, but the person's just like with their eyes open, just looking like, ah, shit. Mm -hmm. Have fun with that for the next 5,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> Number 33. Uh, thank you for that... Uh, oh, God. Okay, so me. Thank you for that glass of milk earlier. Sperm bank employee. What glass of milk? Me. The glass of milk that was sitting on your desk. Sperm bank employee. Oh, my God. Me. Why? <laughs> you drank my glass of milk. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the swerve. Hashtag Gur Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> you drank my glass of milk. Number 32. <laughs> I just I can't even continue. That's just way too fucking funny. And Payton's laughing, which is making me laugh. You guys, holy shit, this is amazing. You drank my fucking glass of milk. <laughs> if I worked at a sperm bank, I would just have... Not milk, because it would smell bad after all, but I would just have, like, a glass of white paint sitting by my desk. Oh, my God. You have it there, you know. Or maybe that uh, silver nitrate, because that looks like cum. All mm. right, number 32. One time my friend sent a pic of a birthday cookie, but he didn't have candles, so instead he lit a green bean on fire. What? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a picture the last, of it. Last one, or I'm laughing at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Number thirty-one. Um, it says, "When your owner says he's out of bird seed, and it shows a bird about to hit a, a button that says ah." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, God. Number 30, um, Pigeon Kid, I need to go bad. Pigeon Mom, try and hold it until we find a statue. Oh. Sounds about right. Yeah, just about. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it reminds I... me of a joke. You want to hear a joke about statues and pigeons? Sure. Okay, so there's this statue of a... I kind of ruined it already, but there's this statue, these two statues uh, of a man and a woman. I mean, they've been standing across from each other for decades. And one day, uh, uh, whatever, an angel, a genie, whatever, something magic comes down and brings them to life and says, uh, you know, you've been standing here guarding this spot for, for like 50 years, and we're going to give you 10 minutes of life. You can do whatever you want. So they go into the bushes, and you just hear all this giggling and, you know, sounds of enjoyment and rustling and whatnot. And they come out, and they're all happy and everything, and the, the, the person says, you have five minutes left. And the, the girl statue smiles and says, okay, but this time you hold the pigeon down and I'll shit on his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just got my car washed, too. They better... They, oh, they the, will. That's how it goes. Yeah. So uh, this one says, please look up Canberra Centennial Sky Whale. It's a $35,000 hot air balloon commissioned for the city's 100th birthday, and it looks like a whale with eight massive dangling titties. It flew over the whole city. What? And somebody must have looked it up and they found a picture. And an article, Massive Flying Eight Titty Birthday Whale. And it's described as terrifyingly nipply. Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, you should Google it one day. It's uh, Canberra uh. Centennial Sky Whale. Uh, number, <laughs> they're weirdos down there in Australia. Number 28, when you take a shit on the carpet and watch one of the most intelligent creatures on the planet clean it up. And it shows this cat looking haughty and it says, pathetic. Uh, well, what are we going to do? Just leave it there? Something, maybe. I don't know. Okay, so it shows a picture of a woodpecker. He's doing his thing. And this angry owl is poking his head out of a hole in the tree shortly above him and it says it's the daytime hector the day when i sleep what the fuck <laughs> nice all right number 26 my sister asked what type of soup i was eating but i didn't know what to say because i had just poured orange juice into a bowl and was drinking it with a spoon what what the fucking shit Who? what <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck wrote this? Is right. <laughs> These are amazing. Okay, number twenty-five. Um, it shows a picture of someone who appears to be praying in front of a large statue of Mr. Potato Head, and it just says, "What religion is this?" I I think that might be all of them. I think so. Combined. Wow, it's uh, all right. So number twenty-four. <laughs> so, I guess it's promotional images for one of the Spy Kids movies, and it's got the, the you know the boy, and he's got it's on his glasses. It says Spy Dude, and like the mother, and it says Spy Mama, and it says the two genders, dude and mama. I, I that's so. St what who wrote this? Mm -hmm. ah. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, so. So this person posts a picture of a, like a Yo Play yogurt, but somebody fucked up putting the label on it. So it, this is what it says: mm. one third fewer cries than the leg. Low fat Yo, fat free yort. What? It's cut off because the label's misaligned. <laughs> <laughs> so so people are just making fun of it. Low fat Yo. Is no one going to talk about one third fewer cries than the leg? Fat free yort. I know I just reblogged this, but now I'm crying over fat-free yort. Way, waters, and heaving. Jeez. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, number 22 shows a, a, a painting, not a picture, but a painting of a guy who appears to be cutting onions in front of a gigantic fat sheep. And it says, I feed my son. He is becoming powerful. Oh, my. Oh. Number 21, scientists at Harvard University have created this 3D model depicting what Jesus Christ may have looked like. It's it's one of the characters from Rugrats nailed to a cross. I don't know why that exists. What, why does, what the fuck is going on here? 
I don't want to know. Just go. I'm moving on. Number 20. No longer going to pursue a career. I'd like to be a rock. Thanks. Metamorphic or igneous? Neither. Dwayne V. Dwayne the Rock. Yeah, I get I get Okay. That's... All right. Uh, number 19. Am I the only one who knows this is a murder mystery dinner? Awkward. What? Okay. Uh, number 18. So, oh, this is a little gross. It says, let me slip into something more comfortable. And it shows a picture of somebody putting their foot in spaghetti. What the? <laughs> <laughs> when, you just, when you just have to slip into something more comfortable, just spaghetti. Why not? It, that's a fetish to somebody. Well, should we talk about cake farting again? Oh, my God. No. <laughs> Why do I remember that? Why do I not remember it until you just said it? <laughs> Number 17. Mm. Uh, this is a Yahoo... And I have a list of Yahoo Answers things coming up next, actually, but this is from Yahoo Answers. Mm. If I legally bought the Mona Lisa, would anyone be able to stop me from eating it? Hmm. I, I suppose not. I guess not. <laughs> if you owned it. you could, why, who, who would come up with that thought in their head? I'm going to eat a painting other than, like, Francis Dollarhide. What the fuck is going on here? I have no idea. Number 16. I don't want to know. <laughs> walks around with an entire Big Mac in my mouth, but never actually biting down. It's a metaphor, see? You put the killing thing right between your teeth, but you don't give it the power to do its killing. You took this from a fault in our stars. Augustus does the same thing only with a cigarette. Okay. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. This is an excerpt from my upcoming 100% original novel, The Fart in Our Stalls. Jeez. I'm just going to move on. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, like, that's making my head spin a little bit. <laughs> so, all right. I'm going to – this next one's just a picture. I'm going to send it to you. You're going to describe this one because – I can't. You're, you're going to do it. Here you go. All right, let's see here. <laughs> I can't do this without laughing. There's no what way. What the fuck? <laughs> There's no way I could describe this picture without laughing my ass off. I'm going to die here. So it's a full-grown male deer. He's looking up at a tree, and he looks like he's stoned. He looks like he's enjoying himself. I think that's marijuana leaves he's looking at. No, that's just some... Uh, he's eating leaves. You can see them Forget coming out of his mouth. Bro. Send. Get in me, you saucy bastards. Oh, yeah. Fucking fine-ass leaves. Sweet damn. <laughs> I, that, that's why I think it's marijuana leaves, because he's tripping balls. You know, marijuana leaves don't have any THC in them. Never mind, you then. Don't, you don't actually smoke the leaves. You smoke, It's the buds that has the drug in it. Yeah. Yeah. No, and plus the marijuana plants are not like on, they're not trees like that they're like little bushes i don't know i've i've only seen it in the south part the fractured butthole <laughs> good game which i'll be streaming this summer by the way oh excellent number 14 uh it says uh, this is an email from spotify it says uh your account has been suspended for 24 hours dear Corey, thank you for using spotify unfortunately your account has played the maximum amount of rock and robin for the day and for your safety, will be suspended for the next 24 hours. We encourage you to keep using Spotify. <laughs> he rocks in the treetops all day long, but he listens all to me all day long. Spotify could, wait, decided to ban it now. From Spotify for <laughs> listening to the same song too many times? I don't know. I know I had one song on repeat through Spotify for two hours, and they never said anything. They must have been longer than two hours. It says, for your safety? Maybe he was trying to memorize the lyrics. To Rock and Robin? Everybody knows the words to that. All right, number 13. Someone who doesn't watch baseball, please explain this picture. And it shows a baseball field with one, two, three, four players all laying on their bellies on the, on the ground. And uh, somebody says, simple, it's nap time. Okay. I have no idea why the players are laying down on the ground like that, but I don't know. So, uh, number 12, um, okay, so it shows a picture of this woman who looks like 
she's got like a mouthful of food, but she's also smiling. And it says, when you choose something, it's very crunchy in a room full of people, and they all turn to look at you. It's like, hi. <laughs> hi. This is right. Okay. Um, uh, number 11 here. I touched a dick once, and it was the scariest thing in my life because it had a really cold head, and I don't know. It wasn't fun. And then they reply to themselves saying, sometimes the I and the U shouldn't be so close on the keyboard. What? They touched a duck, not a dick. But the sentence works better if it's dick. Uh, uh, next. <laughs> Number 10. Uh, oh, actually, this is the, the Russian spy thing from... From Tumblr gets deep, so we could just skip that one because we heard it already. Okay, good. Whew. Number nine. Uh, it shows a little little girl, looks like about two, three years old, and she's got boots on her hands for some reason. And it says, "Oh, evolution isn't real. Explain this." We're evolving too quickly for our own good. <laughs> You're evolving into morons, apparently. Uh, okay, number eight. Uh, it really suck if I got ice or water themed superpowers. I'd have to wear blue and white and gray instead of the reds and oranges that I prefer. So somebody else says, wear the reds and oranges and pull an Iceland or Greenland on them. I have cornered you in this aquarium. Your fire powers are useless. Fire powers? Dude, I'm an ice hero. I free shit and manipulate water. Also, I love aquariums. Thanks for the free entry. But you're dressed as Guy Fieri. Yeah, <laughs> I have an autumnal complexion. <laughs> wow. Wow. The, the conversations that happen on the internet always amaze me. Mm. Number seven, at a party. Are you that guy who brags about weird shit? No, I'm the guy who takes the longest baths in the city. That went completely different. I thought he was going to say, no, I'm the guy who takes the longest shits. Yeah, there you go. Number six is the, the, the fidget spinner earth thing, so we've heard that one already, too. Mm. Yeah. Number five shows a picture of this guy holding a really gigantic snail. and it, oh, I'm sorry, it's a woman. And it says, please, my rabbit. He's very sick. That, that's because it's a snail. A I, fucking snail. I don't, know that big. I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, remember, the, the title of this is post that'll make you say, who the fuck wrote this? I'm just thinking, what the fuck? Is this guy on drugs? Possibly. Uh, number four, a shapeshifter who can only turn into things they eat turns into a puddle of cum. Hey, why are you like this? Ah, uh, that's that's pretty gross. Yeah. Why are you like this? Why do you have to come and ruin it like that? No pun intended. Uh, number three, <laughs> I just got stung by a jellyfish. Quick, pee on it. Me peeing on the jellyfish. This is for stinging my wife. Hmm. Jeez. I get it. Number two, air horn sound. Second air horn sound. This isn't deodorant. Huh? Uh, okay. There, you know, you're, you're kind of younger. There used to be... Deodorant used to be more commonly a spray. Oh, 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 yeah. So imagine they're... Wait a minute. This isn't because it's an air horn. Wonk. Wonk. Wait a minute. And number, finally, uh, number one, barn owls must have been stoked when the barn was invented. I'm, I'm done. I, I'm, I can't, I can't even laugh. It's so funny that I can't laugh. 31, that's all I'm saying. 31 out of 45. I'm going to go with a 40. I, I'm just, I, I, my, my head hurts now from, from that. In a good way, though. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to a little bit of stupidity here because I have 30, how many? It says 30 plus. 32 Yahoo Answers that'll leave you at a loss for words. Have you ever been on Yahoo Answers, Peyton? Yes. Isn't it amazing and horrifying at the same time? Well, in some cases, yes. I, I know I remember asking on there about my, like, being 19 years old and not knowing what the hell to do with my car. See, that's, uh, that's a normal thing, but have you ever browsed the questions that people ask? No. It's amazing. Well, you're about to find out. Okay, so this first one, uh, here's the question. Will my laptop get heavier if I put more files on it? What? 
this is what I'm talking about, man. And a person answered, yes, especially heavy metal music or information about black holes. Light jazz and pictures of lights and bright skies weigh very little. Stick with bright colored stuff and fun light reading material to keep the weight of your laptop down. <laughs> okay. Number 31, sarcastic. this is the question here. If I'm cooking and I cut a tomato, is there a chance the knife would split an atom while it slices the tomato and make an explosion? What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> this is the kind of shit people ask on there, though. That's what scares me about modern society today. Number 30. If I shave my golden retriever like a lion, will the other dogs respect him more? Uh, they'll probably still sniff his butt. Yeah, pretty much. Number 29, can I melt my fingernails? What? I, listen to this. I want to clip my fingernails, collect the clippings over time, and then melt them so I can shape them in a sculpture. It's for an art class. Is it possible chemically to melt them? How much heat would it take? I... Experiment and find out? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just try? Number 28, how do I unbake a cake? By eating it, shitting it out, and there you go. It's unbaked. There you go. Yeah. That sounds that sounds like a good answer, actually. Number Thank 27. You, Sam, Bob. <laughs> How come when I talk to girls on Facebook, they don't answer back? Okay. So, wait. Listen to this. This is the elaboration. I go on Facebook every day, and I say, hey, what's up, to girls. The girls don't know me, but I just want to be friends. Every time I say, hey, what's up, they don't answer me back. I like to know what do I have to do to get them to answer me back. Uh, additional details, I'm not ugly. You know, you can't just cold call women. It doesn't work like that. Uh, like, it's just creepy. Yeah, and if a girl does that to a guy, then it's a bot. Oh, yeah. Uh, almost certainly it is. Number 26, can a dog get pregnant, which they spelled as pregnant, by the way, if a male dog's humps a female's face? What? So basically, they saw a dog getting a blowjob, and they're wondering if the dog could get pregnant. Jeez. Oh, number 25. I wanted to see if my computer would read my credit card, so I put it in the CD-ROM, and it got stuck. How do I get it out? I tried toothpicks, but lost them in the process, and also the drive is making funny noises. Help? You, don't de you sir, don't deserve to have a computer. Probably not. <laughs> put my credit card in the disk drive. Okay, uh, this is just one very simple question. Is food good? And the best answer is, sure. <laughs> I don't know who this person is that asked, is food good? But he kind of looks like Zach. Uh, Zach, are you, uh, are you stoned again? He's not listening to this, trust me. Okay. <laughs> And if you are, get the fuck off my channel, you weirdo. Um, did you see what he did with that weird mask that he wore? Uh, yeah. What was that? I don't know. That's why I said, are you stoned? I saw that in my subscription feed, and I'm like, what? And then, and then I realized, why am I subscribed to this guy? Just to see what kind of stuff he's going to do? Not a, well, I mean, it's okay when he's playing video games with his friends, but when he's wearing a mask and screaming about how he reaps souls, that's just a little weird. Like, somebody should keep an eye on him. Anyway, nobody knows what the hell we're talking about. So, number 23. About how many words are there in 1,000 characters? I'm writing a college application essays, and a couple of the short answers are supposed to be around 1,000 characters. About how many words is this? Thanks. I, it depends uh, on what fucking uh, words. I mean, wow. All right. Number 22. What does India produce more of? That's the entire question. <laughs> the best answer. 
They produce more Indians than any other country on Earth. Most populated in the whole world. That's not true, but most populated by Indians. Wait, what? China is the most populated country. When did that happen? About 3,000 years ago. Never mind. Forget us anything. Yeah. Uh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> number 21. And keep in mind, this is, this is written. How do you spell the word Chipotle? Just like that. Are you sure that this is Yahoo Answers and not who said that? It, it's Yahoo Answers. Trust me on that. Oh, my God. I can recognize what it looks like. Okay, so this one is, I want to break a bone. I have never broken a bone in my life, so I stopped drinking milk and didn't eat a lot of things with calcium in it, and I would do stupid stuff and still not break bones from jumping off something 10 feet high to having my foot run over or people trying to break my arm. These are all dares, by the way, and I want so I want to so bad, but no matter what I do, I can't break a bone. My sister, on the other hand, drinks milk every fucking day and has broken her wrist by falling on it or something on her back from falling downstairs and her arm from falling on it. I've done all those but worse, and I can't break a goddamn bone. Wait a minute. Didn't M. Night Shyamalan make a movie about this? Uh, Unbreakable? Yeah. Nice try, Mr. guy. I know Mr. what you're doing. That's Mr. Glass versus Bruce Willis. They're going to make a, a second one, too. It's about time. I mean, it's a good movie. Don't get me wrong. Well, did you see Split? Yeah. Yeah, so that's the, the I guess, the Sam Jackson and an eye patch moment at the end there, you know? <laughs> All right, number 19. I uploaded a picture a while back and got a decent amount of likes on it. Then I changed my profile picture to that same one, but it started with zero likes. Does anybody know how to change it and have the same amount of likes on it? Urgent, please help. Get some friends that will actually like it. Who the fuck cares? Like, who gives a shit, right? Right. <laughs> My God. All right, number 18. What goes good with coconut vodka? And the best answer, teenage girls with low self-esteem and questionable morals. Best answer ever. Sounds about right. Reminds me of my younger years. <laughs> Number 17. Why can't we grow burger in a tree? Yeah, why can't we grow burgers I, in trees? I don't know, man. Just try planting some pickles and see what pops up. Number 16. Is it bad to show hentai to my two-year-old son? Please, my wife is very angry with me. What the fuck? Um, and then somebody said, no, it's by all means okay. I hope this guy's wife takes that baby and gets far the fuck away from this guy. He's going to show him Bible Black, and the next thing you know... <laughs> uh, no good can come of that. Uh, number 15, how do I ask my girlfriend to wear makeup around me at all times? Best answer, take her to the mirror and say, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the ugliest bitch without makeup of them all? Hopefully she'll get the message. And probably a breakup message with it. Do <laughs> uh, you want to get punched? Because that's how you get punched. Number 14, is the Hunger Games based on a true story? What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Give it a few years. Maybe it will be. I hope not. Oh, I'm too. I'm too. I'm a. Sl I'm too slow of a guy. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna get sniped. Oh. <laughs> well, you're too old to be in it anyway. Okay. Good. I think only kids can be in it. Yeah, I think right. You have to be like like around 19 or so. So. Number 13, what is the best way to milk a sheep? What? I don't know, pull on his fucking titties. Like, what, what kind of question is that? I don't even, like, what? Okay, number 12. Do birds technically have two birthdays? All right, so don't say bir birds don't have birthdays, stupid, because everyone I ask gives me that answer. So if a bird has a birthday, would it technically have two? I ask this because there is a day it is laid and the day it hatches. This subject confuses me greatly. Thanks for answering. Well, this just went to Twitter. T Tumblr gets deep quick. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, number 11. It, make, it does make sense, but at the same time, it's like, <laughs> this is getting a little too deep. Yeah. Listen to this one. 
I accidentally swallowed a cough drop. Is that bad? Why? Like, it's it's like I know that you think it's medicine, but it's not. It's just candy. Oh, and then the best answer: call the hospital. You have but minutes to live. That's a great yeah. answer. I would love to hear the nine one one call that comes out of that. The internet told me I'm gonna die. Oh, here. Oh, speaking of the internet, Peyton, number ten. How do I download the internet? You don't. Keep in mind, this person posted this on the internet. I want to be able to take the internet with me wherever I go, but I can't afford a monthly plan like on a smartphone. Is there a way to download all of the internet so I always have it on my laptop? Bruh. There ain't a hard drive big enough for that. No way. Not possible. And there's a lot of shit on there you don't want. Number nine. Are you usually Russian in the mornings? Not rushing, but Russian. <laughs> yeah. Number eight, how turn computer monitor into mirror? Hi, does anyone know if it is possible to use a background that would essentially turn my computer monitor into a mirror? Scanning a mirror doesn't work. I can't believe they tried that. That's amazing. I can't believe it either. Uh, number seven, do potatoes have souls? Is there some sort of experiment I could do to find out before I mash them? That's got to be a shit post, because he posted that in the vegetarian and vegan section. <laughs> so that's, that's a shit post. Uh, a good one, but it is a shit post. Uh, number six, how can I convince my Buddhist friend that he owes me money from three lifetimes ago? Uh, how's he know that? I, uh, I don't know, but I, I have a feeling that if you that if you try that, he's gonna kick you in the nads. Probably. That's what I would do. <laughs> Number five. Uh, I'm about to get addicted to cocaine to replace my masturbation addiction. Does it work that way? Hurry, answer uh... fast. <laughs> I would just stick to pulling yourself off because cocaine's bad news, man. <laughs> Wow. Unless he's doing it, unless he's doing like seventeen times a day. Ooh, in that case, you might want to see a doctor. Where is the internet located, and is it open to the public? I would like to take my son to see it on vacation. Wow. Well, maybe it's like in South Park. It's just a giant router. All right. Number three: Is the Earth visible from Earth? Uh, it's, just look down. You, you, there you go. Yeah, it's totally visible. You, you're looking at it right now, probably. Number two, is the is this the average of all questions asked on Yahoo Answers? I've developed a computer program and API which has aggregated all the questions asked on Yahoo Answers and come up with a composite of the questions. So here is the result. Do atheists believe that I am Aquarius with Virgo rising who may or may not be pregnant after unprotected sex, will call my baby Jules Champagne or Rose, and has 10-10 for looks, or should I just kill myself? How accurate do you think this program is? Well, as somebody who's browsed Yahoo Answers many times, I can say that is very accurate. Yeah, That's I can go with amazing. that. Yeah. Um, oh, and number one... I made Jesus-shaped pancakes, but I burnt them. Am I going to hell? <laughs> you know, I gotta say it. Probably, but for other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> what the... Okay, uh, out of... How many were there? There were 32 of these. What do you think, Payton? How entertaining I'll go 27. This? How many? 27 sounds good. I'm, I'm gonna say 25 on that one. I, I enjoyed it. Um, I've seen many, many stupid questions on there. It's amazing. And I was always the asshole that gave the most sarcastic reply possible, you know. All right. Let me head over to Facebook because I do have some lists that were submitted, and then we're going to hit up that app I told you about earlier. All right. What so time is it? Got to go to my Necrovimix official page. And go yeah, and I got Facebook. five minutes left, too. What's that? I got five minutes, too, so. <laughs> okay, well, that, that's about how long I want to go, so that makes sense. Uh, where's my messages? I, I hate the way they keep rejiggering this on me. Um, no, no. Oh, here it is. Inbox. Okay. 
Okay, so... Oh, God. Oh, this is all different. Why? Okay, here we go. So, Poof Nisse sent me... Um, um, he well, he transcribed this from. Uh, do you know a guy on YouTube named Rabid Luigi? He does top top lists, top five, top ten, and shit like that. Uh, nope. Okay, well, he uh, he recently did this video. I actually saw the video already. It's top five games you can't play or buy anymore by Rabid Luigi. So the you know um, sometimes a game is released only digitally and then it's taken away and you technically can't buy it anymore. So that's what this is all about. Uh, number five is, and I, don't, I wasn't even aware of this, and maybe you were, uh, the Legend of Zelda Four Swords Anniversary Edition. Got it! Oh, I got it. it! So so they released this on the 3DS for a special anniversary event, and they even changed it to include a single-player campaign. The original Four Swords did not have single-player um, on Game Boy Advance, so I don't understand why it was taken down. I don't understand either, but I've got it. That's cool. Uh, you probably need to take care of that 3DS, because I doubt you can transfer that. You can transfer it. That's how I've been able to do it. Oh, okay, because I know that like um, certain things like the Ambassador games you can't transfer. Oh, I don't sign up for those. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, number four, Rage of the Gladiator. Now, Rage of the Gladiator uh, was a game on uh, WiiWare. It was like a gladi gladiator fighting game that used the motion controls. Now, um, you, you can get this, like, on, like, Android and other things, but it doesn't, it's not the original experience because it, it only used motion controls. Right. So unless you have this on your Wii, that you're not playing it the way that it was intended to be played, so to speak. Uh, number three is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the game. Uh, I didn't know that this was taken down. I know AJ was a huge fan of this game. Apparently it has something to do with the licensing, with the movie and the comics and all that. You ever played right. that one? Uh, no, I've only heard of it, but I never got to play it. It's like a like a Streets of Rage type of thing. All right, pretty good game. Uh, number two is Fantasy Star Online. Uh, that the servers for that were up for a really long time, but it's it's an old game. That's now yeah, you can't play that one anymore. I still play it. Fantasy Star Online, yeah, but no, um, you're probably playing it on a on a on a server that was made. By, yeah, you know, pr private server. Yeah, um, and number one is Club Penguin. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, when he got to number one and he starts talking about Club Penguin, I'm like, Rabbit Luigi, really? That's your number one pick? Well, a lot of people played it. My uh, niece used to play it royally. I, oh, maybe there's private servers for Club Penguin. <laughs> I mean, was it really a game? I thought it was just a glorified website. It was a full-blown video game. Oh. Well, out of, I'm going to give that four out of five. I'll say four as well. Okay. He also sent me a list. Um, da, 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 where is it? Oh, here it is. This is from Dorkley. Eleven former Disney Park employees tell you their most non-safe-for-work stories. <laughs> yeah, I've heard some interesting things. Okay, so number one, not exactly not safe for work, but a scuba instructor I had once told I had once told me that before accepting a job as water goofy on a Disney cruise, a goofy that hangs out in the pool, he had to agree that in the event that he starts drowning, he is to be carried away before lifeguards remove his costume so as to not upset the children, of course. CPR wouldn't be performed on scene. Dude! That's an agreement that you couldn't get me to sign. That's fucked up. No, like, fuck the hell. If anything, that's lawsuit worthy. Well, yeah, but you're signing a waiver. I guess if you don't sign the waiver, you don't get the job. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, number two. Drunk and disorderly people are very quickly disappeared from guest view by a covert security force who can and do roughly handle, beat, and subdue or arrest you to be removed from the property via the backstage routes. <laughs> and somebody replies and says, I picture them wearing full-size Mickey Mouse masks and using that Mickey Mouse laugh while they beat you. <laughs> and then the original person says, They actually wear all black and usually work in a group of six or more, depending on the issue, with a lead guy in a black suit, and he is the only one who will talk and try to compromise. Get the guest and his friends to tone things down and move out. Once forcibly removed and ejected, you could end up at the sheriff's custody with charges, be bounced back with no refund or banned, or at a hospital for fighting back. Go ahead and sue. Disney has deeper pockets and more resources than you can imagine. 
Jeez. Well, don't act like an asshole at Disney. That's all, you know what I mean? That's the uh, gist of number Number three. Not me, but my friend's dad worked at Disney World when he was a kid, and he took him down into the tunnels one day. He doesn't remember much except seeing Aladdin and Peter Pan making out. Apparently, that was a life-changing moment for him. <laughs> and that's the moment he realized he was gay, probably. I mean... Probably. There, there was a uh, there was a comic strip that one of my lesbian friends posted, and it was like these two girls sitting there, and it was like, "Hey, how did you first find out that you were into girls?" And the other one goes, "When I looked at a girl and thought, nice." <laughs> and I'm like, "Wow, that's how it worked for me too." <laughs> uh, number four, I have many relatives who work at Disneyland. Apparently, kids can get a little over the top on grad night. One couple started having oral sex on Pirates of the Caribbean, not realizing that they were being watched the entire time by a ride attendant through security monitors. When the ride attendant announced over the loudspeakers to put it back in your pants, they were so surprised they almost fell off the boat. <laughs> Amazing. Very. Number five. Worked at World in 2006. Apparently the elephant in the Tarzan scene of the great movie ride is big enough for two people to have sex in, according to my old roommate. That's, uh, I'm sure that you could probably fit three in there if they're small. Probably. <laughs> Number six. I was 20 years old when I was a CM. That's cast member, for anybody wondering. Uh, worked at Walt Disney World in Orlando from May to August of 2014 as part of the... Pro wow, just give them all your details. As part of the professional internship program, I was a horticulturist intern, so I maintained and installed the gardens in Epcot, Port Orleans, and a bunch of other resorts. One of the most memorable events was walking backstage at Epcot and seeing Elsa in full, grown, full gown and wig, tripping on a sidewalk, spilling her coffee, and blurting out, Son of a fuck. <laughs> <I'll>... <laughs> That's amazing. I also spent my time there living in Vista Way. Yes, it's as crazy as everyone says it all. All in all, best job I've ever had in my life, and it's helped tremendously with my career. 11 out of 10 would do again, especially at Vista Way. All right. Number seven, I used to work at Disneyland. At Pirates of the Caribbean, there is a spot called the Mylar Table. On the ride, it's at the Burning City, where the windows make it look like flames, but it's just lighting on Mylar fabric with a fan blowing. Well, that table has hosted an awful lot of fucking over the years. It was almost a rite of passage at the time. However, that was pre-9-11, so who knows if it's still such a glorious spot for after-hour shenanigans. <laughs> nice. You know, I mean, I would just not touch anything. It, it, it's, it's like the Grand Master ship. You, there's probably a thin film of grease on everything, you know, and I mean people grease. Pretty much. Number eight, not me, but a friend told me that she was working there. She no When she was working there, she notices that there is a big audience for Disney porn in which people masturbate in Disney rides and upload it online. A lot of people seem to be into that. Gross. Also, what? she said that there was this autistic kid once that started masturbating in a ride with no adult supervision. They had to turn the lights on and everything. She also said there was a big business for handicapped people as people hire them for the day so they can go to the front of the line. <laughs> you just fucking hire a cripple? That's so terrible. That's horrid. That's that's amazing. I mean, it's kind of like when I go to a, a concert with my friend Joe because he's he's crippled and he usually gets really good seating because of that. But I'm not hiring him or using him. He's my fucking friend. You can't cough up the extra 50 bucks for a VIP? Oh, my God. Okay, number nine. I worked in hospitality in Orlando throughout college, and a lot of people I work with had been part of the Disney College program or worked at Disney at some point. Apparently there is an apartment complex, I forget the name, that Disney uses to house the college program employees, and every single person that worked at Disney knows about it because it's just a big sorority slash fraternity orgy. Nice. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Uh, number 10. Sorry in advance, typing from my phone. Worked at Walt Disney World Resorts for two years, some of the wilder things that happened. Guy pissing off the third floor balcony onto a girl's car. Must not with the top back at the college program dorms. Girl caught being a prostitute in the first two weeks of the program. Friend of mine is watching the camera for Pirates of the Caribbean. The whole ride is videos with night vision cameras and someone has to watch in case something happens. 
Guy and a girl get on, and as soon as the ride turns dark, she whips out a schlong and just goes to town. He must have surprised her by going in her mouth because she immediately shot back, like jerked her body upwards, and made the, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I think I'm going to puke gesture, you know, like with the hands flapping next to the face. He's yeah. laughing pretty hard. The people in the seat in front of them are oblivious. She apparently swallows. Fast forward one minute and the entire ride staff know. So as the couple get off the ride, they make a line and clap for her. <laughs> no one on the ride has any idea, and they think it's all part of the show, so they're all giddy and excited. Meanwhile, the girl in the back is red as a tomato, and the guy is beaming with pride. And we nickname one custodian Dirty Deeds because he had the absolute worst luck when it came to cleaning bathrooms. Well, one day, Dirty is going to clean a bathroom and notices someone is in the last stall. Nothing unusual, so Dirty cleans the rest of the bathroom while waiting. As Dirty is about to finish up, the guy comes out with this sort of shifty look, no eye contact, moving quickly, etc. He notices Dirty standing there and suddenly shuffles out very quickly. Wondering what he had just witnessed, Dirty opens the bathroom stall to see it's been completely jizzed over. It's everywhere. On the toilet, the walls, teepee dispenser, everything. Poor Dirty had to clean up another man's jizz all by himself. What the fuck?! Had it been, like, a long time for this guy that there was that much of it? He must have been going, like, round four, ding, ding. Oh. His poor dick. His, his balls must be, like, swollen. Oh, number 11. Either that or just shriveled up. I don't, I don't know. Just go. Yeah. Uh, number 11. This is the last one. Most I ever saw was Belle in her bloomers smoking a cigarette and yelling at her boyfriend on the phone. What? They're kind of tame after the jizz nuke, but I'll, all right. Exactly. Now, out of 11, I'm, I'm going to give it a 10. That, that last one was whack, but the rest of them were really good. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. I'll go, I'll go with 10 as well. And it's not, just, it's not just Disneyland either. I've got a friend who works at Universal Studios. And the thing is, she's got, she's like this groupy friend of mine who's like, uh, she wants to, uh, you know, have some fun. She's like, there's a place that all the guys uh, and girls, if they find something they like, they'll talk with them, they'll buy them lunch, and then the next thing you know, they'll either blow them or fuck them right in the back of this place. She's like, I want to take you there if you ever come out here. And I'm like, okay, no to self, do not visit Universal Studios if she's there. <laughs> yeah, you might want to just, just no. Elizabeth's going to kick my ass. That's all I'm no, going to say. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I do it. <laughs> or you can bring her with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um Okay, so this is interesting. This is from um this app I have guys called Tapa. I already told um Payton about it. But this app gives me lists and gives me a lot of them and it's pretty good stuff, so I save the ones that I want to do on list critics. This is twenty five facts you always believe but are not actually true. So let's see how many of these you may believe. Okay. So what does the Earth revolve around, Peyton? Uh, the sun. Okay, well, actually, the Earth revolves around uh, something called the barycenter of, uh, of the solar system. It's, it is a point in which everything revolves around, and usually it is within the sun, but due to some shifting, sometimes we're orbiting nothing at all. Huh. So, there you go. Number 24, do you ever see the, the tongue map where it says, like, oh, like the tip of your tongue tastes like sweetness and the sides are for saltiness and all that? Yeah. Yeah, it's bullshit. I kind of figured as much because, yeah. 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 It's, it's completely bullshit. Every taste can be sensed on every part of the tongue. And it uh, sucks. Number 23, picking up baby birds and returning them to their nests will not cause their mothers to reject them. Probably shouldn't do it anyway, but. Yeah, I, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Uh, number 22, sugar doesn't actually make you hyper. And yes, the idea of a sugar rush is mythical. According to recent science, it's all a placebo effect. Well, that just shot down the whole great cornholio thing. Well, usually, well, actually, no, because, um, and, and what I was going to say is a lot of the things that have a lot of sugar also usually have caffeine in them. Okay, that'll actually do it because every time Cornholio he, shows he up, the it's because cappuccino or the Jolt Cola or something like that, you know, the root uh, beer. There was that one time, you know. 
He ate like 27 candy bars <laughs> and like drank a thick pack of root beer. <laughs> yeah, but and then Mr. Van Driesen just said, that's funny, I just read that sugar doesn't cause hyperactivity. But it's not sugar, it's the caffeine that does it. Yeah. Number 21, chameleons don't change color to blend into their surroundings, they change their color to communicate. Actually, now that's new to me. Yeah, they, it, it actually, the color that a chameleon is is based on its uh, emotional state, not its surroundings. Uh, number 20, Napoleon was actually taller than the average Frenchman. And yet everybody says that he's got a shorter than Napoleon complex. So well, he, there goes he would that be one. short. He would be short by today's standards, and that's where I think it came from. But um, people were generally shorter back then. Now look at us. We're all giants. Yeah. Number 19, Vikings didn't have horns on their helmets. Blasphemy. It's actually a really bad idea to have horns on your helmet because uh, in a battle situation, you don't want to give your opponent something that they can grab. Yep. Um, the horns on the helmet came from, like, operas and shit like that, where it was just, just to look cool, you know? Thanks a lot, Carmen. Yeah. Uh, number 18, chewing gum does not take seven years to digest. It actually can't be digested, and you'll just poop it right out. Yep. My uh, band teacher used to joke about that. Whenever he'd bust us with gum, he's like, swallow it. And somebody made the argument, but it'll stay in my colon for seven years. And he's like, bullshit. Yeah, you'll just poop it right out. Yeah, he literally said bullshit. Yeah, it is bullshit. Number 17, uh, redheads and bl and blondes are not going extinct. They are becoming more rare as the world population increases, but in order to go extinct, every single person carrying the redhead gene would have to die or not reproduce. Uh, uh, you might not have ever heard that bullshit fact. It was going around. Uh, actually, not that long. It was a couple of years ago. People were saying, you know, redheads are going extinct or some shit. Copper Cab well, was screaming about it on YouTube. It was amazing. Oh, I never uh, saw that, so... Oh, you never saw Copper Cab? Uh-uh. You ever see that South Park where um, they... they uh, Pick a ginger? They made Cartman a ginger, and he started like, like gingers do have says, we're a proud people. He was actually mimicking a real guy on YouTube named Copper Cab. Never saw it. <laughs> yeah. You'll have to look it up. It's pretty funny. Uh, All right. Number 16, no bat is blind. While many species do use echolocation, some have excellent night vision and don't rely on echolocation at all. So there you go, blind. <laughs> bats aren't blind. Except for Zubat, because he ain't got no fucking eyes. Yeah, he, but he does like to hone in and whenever you're in caverns. <laughs> you know what? And, and that's an interesting thing. You know what the most common encounter in a Gen 1 Pokemon game is? It's not Zubat. Really? It's Tentacool. Oh, yeah. That motherfucker's everywhere. Uh, number 15, life expectancy in the Middle Ages wasn't as low as you think. The average age was brought down, but that was mostly because of a high infant mortality rate. Most adults lived well into their 60s. Huh. Well, when you hear average life expectancy, you know, infant deaths do bring that down drastically. But that doesn't Somewhat. mean that you you know you hit 40 and died. That wasn't a thing. Number 13, the Coriolis effect doesn't actually change the direction the toilet flushes. That's right, Lisa Simpson was wrong. It only affects large bodies of water. If your toilet flushes backwards, it's because the water enters the toilet in that way. Jeez. Lisa's smart, but she was wrong, wrong, wrong on that one. Number 12, there is no such thing as a banana tree. It's a banana plant. Oh, semantics. So it's not a tree. Whatever. Number 11, goldfish don't have a three-second memory. It's actually much better than that. They don't specify how much better, but uh, anything's better than three seconds, I guess. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is better, right? No, yeah. actually, I've heard that it's like a couple of months. Uh, number 10, sharks can get cancer. I don't know if you've ever heard that sharks can't get cancer, but... It's... Never heard of it. Yeah. All number these I'm nine. just breaking... Most of these I'm just raising my eyebrow to because it's like, I've never heard of this. Well, probably, you see, because a lot of this was shit that was taught in schools when I was a kid. And we're finding out that it's all bullshit. That's why I always say school is bullshit because I was taught all this crap. Number Jeez. nine, cracking your knuckles won't lead to arthritis. See, this I actually read up on. Some dude did like a 60-year a experiment. Yeah. 
And it's like, holy shit. And he get, like, when did he decide to do this? And when did he decide to quit? You know, what's funny is I, I, I absolutely do have arthritis, but it's not in my fingers. Lower back? My knees. Ah. My back's got other problems, but that's muscular. Yeah, uh, I've got... Eight. You I've can got see bad the, you can see the pyramids from farther away in space than you can see the Great Wall of China, which cannot even be seen from the International Space Station. And it's another <laughs> thing I was taught as a school as a school kid that the only man-made thing that could be seen from space was the Great Wall of China. Any astronaut will tell you it's bullshit. You can see the pyramids from space, though. Uh, number seven: dropping a penny from the top of the Empire State Building would not kill someone. Of course, they did. They did that on MythBusters. Yeah, it'll hurt, but you know, it'll hurt, but it's not gonna. You know, it'll kind of sting. You don't want to get hit by it, but it's not gonna. It's not you know put your life in danger, unless you're uh, Samuel L. Jackson in uh, Unbreakable. Yeah. Number six: fingernails and hair do not continue to grow after death. The surrounding skin will start to recede, however, so it may appear as though they're growing. You know, like a tiny little bit. Now, okay, I actually heard this one, and I, I read this in a book once, and I was like, that has to be fake, and I'm so glad to see that it's fake. Number five, a duck's quack does, in fact, echo. Well, yeah. Of course it does. I, I, I read this in a book and said the, a duck's quack is the only sound that cannot echo, and I'm like, that's bullshit. Uh, number four, dogs don't sweat through their tongue. Most of their sweat glands are located in their foot pads. While panting does keep them cool, panting is not equivalent to sweating. Yeah. What's funny is uh, I'm, I'm part of a group on Facebook for, you know, for pit bull owners, and mostly I just like to look at the cute pictures of dogs because pit bulls are amazing. But um, somebody posted something about like how their dog is waking up just like drenched in sweat, and they're like, I thought dogs couldn't sweat. What's going on? Should I, should I be worried? And I, I had a post saying, yes, dogs can sweat. Yeah. Uh, number three, while the Supreme Court did rule that tomatoes are vegetables in the legal sense for the purpose of taxation, they did not claim that they are vegetables in any botanical sense. They are still fruits. All right. You want me to blow your mind? I'm listening. And a tomato is a vegetable and a fruit. You know why? Why? A fruit is a scientific term. Vegetable is a cooking term. There's no group of plants called vegetables. So anything that you cook as a vegetable is a vegetable. <laughs> That's the sound of his mind being blown. Just about. <laughs> Number two, poinsettias are not lethal. They may upset your pet's stomach, but they won't kill anything. Yeah, there's always these warnings going around about don't have poinsettias if you have, like, cats or dogs. And Most animals are smart enough not to eat them anyway. Right. And, and number one, I actually wondered about this myself on a video not too long ago. The color orange was named after the fruit, not the other way around. Well, yeah, even I knew that. No, I wondered, because... I always wonder, did we call them oranges because they're orange? Or do we call the color orange because oranges are that color? And the answer is, we call the color orange because the fruit is that color. All right, so um, out of... Oh, actually, I, I accidentally skipped one somehow. I skipped oh. number 14. Your fingers don't wrinkle because they absorb water. They wrinkle because your brain tells them to. Yeah, it's some kind of evolutionary trait we got to uh, help us grip in water. Grip things better, yes, exactly. Because, um, you know, um, even though we are mammalian, all life came from the sea, basically. We're all swimming around, having sex with mermaids at some point. Out of <laughs> um, 25, what do you say, Peyton? <laughs> that was, it was pretty good. I did raise my eyebrows a couple of times at a few of them, but I'll say 22. Okay, uh, this next one is... Also a, a, a list of facts, but it's 20 facts that you may not be able to forget. Ooh. So it's just interesting facts that, you know, um, unfortunately they're not really numbered, but um, I can probably get through this pretty easily. There are 20 of them. Let's see. Most people have no idea that street lights are actually much bigger than they seem, and lines on the road are much thicker than they seem. This is an explanation for the, for the phenomenon known as size perception. 
Like, for example, how tall do you think your average uh, stoplight is? Uh, probably about 12 feet. No, not that tall, but uh, it would come up to about your chest. But they huh. don't look that big from a distance because of the whole size perception thing. And how oh, oh, long oh, yeah. well, stop? You... you meant like the pole and everything. Oh, no, I meant just the stoplight part. No, the stoplight's like maybe three feet tall, and that's no, it. No, it, 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 it closer to five feet tall. All right, cool. Yeah, and uh, and how long do you think the dashes on a road are? Uh, about a foot long. About ten feet long. Huh. They look short because you're going so fast. Oh, oh, oh! I, I, I. Okay, never mind. I'm thinking of uh. What are you uh, thinking of? <laughs> like the dashes. I was thinking of uh. On a road. Of uh. I forgot what the term is. I, I, I'm so out of the loop with terms. Okay. Well, let me just move on then. Yeah. Every year, 98% of you becomes a new person. This is how many new atoms you get in a, in a year. Huh. Hmm. Well, happy fucking birthday, right? I know, right? That is Not only is that true, that's also the reason why we age. Oxygen is necessary for people to live, but it also oxidizes out cells, which is what leads to aging. See, I just talked about that. The person sitting the closest to you on the left is the person furthest from you on the right. Shit. <laughs> it's true, right? That just, yeah. Your age is just the number of circles you've made around the sun. Okay, how much do you think, Peyton, a cloud weighs? Zero point zero. <laughs> the average cloud weighs around 500 tons. What? It's a shitload of water. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah. I'm face palming. You should be. Most people don't think of that, though. They think because it's floating... It's light, lighter than air, right? No. Um, and a storm cloud weighs um, about uh, 200 times that, by the way. Right. In 1991, sociologist Scott Field counted the average number of friends that one person has and compared it to the number of friends of the friends of that person. The second number was always bigger than the first one, which means that your friends always have more friends than you do. This is where the friendship paradox comes from. Huh. See, now, what bugs me about that is it's, it, it can't be true because, okay, so, like, I, I have, like, like, X amount of friends, right? Right. So, since you're my friend, you would have more friends than me, right? Right. But then, I'm your friend. I don't have more friends than you. Huh. So, it... it it only works in a linear fashion. I've heard that before, and I never am able to really understand it because it doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. Okay. The people who were born... Pay attention to this one, Peyton, because this applies to you. The people who were born in the 90s lived in two millenniums, two centuries, and three decades, and they're not even 30 years old yet. Shit. Nice, huh? Yeah. Okay, this is a really amazing one. Um, did you know that there are things called prohibited colors? Uh-uh. They're colors that technically exist, but we can't see them, and as a matter of fact, we can't even imagine them. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, try to imagine a bluish yellow. Are you able to do that? I'm imagining dogs barking. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, yeah, that... that God, he's been flipping out. I, no, I can't really do it. Bluish yellow, you, you think of green, right? Yeah. But there is a such thing in nature's bluish yellow, or reddish green. Yeah, I've actually, I can actually pick, picture that. Reddish green, really? Or are you thinking yeah. of brown? No, I'm honestly thinking of reddish green, like mm. what, a, like I'm an apple sometimes. Well, that's more of, well, because there's parts of an apple that could be red and parts that are green, though. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... Never I'm talking mind. about a solid color. Never mind, can't yeah, think of it. It's impossible to me. Don't feel bad about it that you can't conceptualize it because we can't because we can't see it. Uh, the oxygen atoms that are now in your lungs, the carbon in your muscles, the calcium in your bones, and the iron in your blood 
were born inside stars and scattered around the universe when they exploded. This means that all of us are part alien and made out of stardust. Sweet, so we've already discovered aliens. Yeah. We are stardust, we are golden, billion-year-old carbon. Got to get ourselves back to the garden. Do you know that song? Nope. It's Woodstock um, is the name of the song. It was written by Joni Mitchell, but the most famous version was by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And I haven't heard either one. The best version was performed by um, James Taylor live on the Howard Stern Show. Hmm. It was amazing. Uh, by the time you're 60, you will lose half of your taste buds and the ability to tell the difference between sweet, salty, sour, and bitter products. Good. Maybe now I can finally start eating more than just broccoli vegetables. I like broccoli. But, um, it, 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 you know, that, that's sad because I, maybe that's why old people eat such crappy food. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're talking to a former CNA. Oh my God, I wouldn't eat. The, I wouldn't even feed that stuff to my dog. I mean, I, I, you know, Gordon Ramsay always said if if a restaurant has only old clients, you know, the food is probably shit. Jeez. If you can't bring in young people, you're not doing good. You know. You can't sense any smells while you are asleep. Bullshit. I don't agree that maybe in deep sleep you can't but i've woken up to the smell of bacon many times in my life i've also woken up to the smell of my cat using the litter box during pregnancy if a woman damages her internal organs the baby sends its stem cells to the damaged spot to speed up the healing process oh that's nice of them That's, that's pretty cool well it is in their best interests right Yeah. Every day our heart produces enough energy for a 19-mile truck trip, and the brain produces enough energy to light a 10-watt bulb. Uh, I'm going to have to give that first theory some thought. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you are a trucker, right? Yep. Well, you go a lot more than 19 miles a day, though. I saw your log. Oh, my God. You can know the degrees of an angle using just your hand. Spread your fingers as much as possible and put your palm on a surface of the angle of which you wish to measure. The little finger should lie on the bottom side and represent zero degrees. The angle between the thumb and the little finger will be 90 degrees. The angles between the little finger and the other fingers are 30, 45, and 60 degrees, respectively. Hey, my algebra teacher teacher taught me that. I wish mine did. I'm a fucking you. I had to buy a protractor. (laughs) (laughs) She was cheap. In your lifetime, you meet around 16 murderers and don't even know it. Well, if you I think about believe- it, all the people that you come across in your lifetime, 16 of them being murderers, is actually a pretty low number. Yeah. Every time you... Oh, I told my dad this, and it blew his mind. Every time you shuffle a deck of cards, you are the first person in history to have the cards in that specific order. That just blew my mind. I, I read I read a version of this that was a lot more detailed. Basically, um, there's so many permutations of, of cards when you shuffle them that... It is highly unlikely that when you shuffle a deck that it has ever been in that before in human history. Huh. You can find out the number of days in each month using your knuckles. Make a fist and start counting the months by knuckles. Each knuckle bump and gap is a separate month. Start to count on one hand, then after reaching the end, start again with the knuckles of the index finger. If the month is on the knuckle bump, there are 31 days, or if it's on the gap, the month contains 30 days or less. Or you could yeah, just do the rhyme in your head is much easier. Well, that I remember hearing that when I was growing up, yeah. so... 30 days, has September, you know, that thing. That's a lot easier. By the way, uh, I, I got my nephew with this. I mean, he's seven, but... Um, how, many, uh, how many months have 28 days in them? All of them? Yeah, see, he didn't get that. He's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. But he's seven. I did, have, so. I did have to think about it for yeah, a second. All of them, exactly. Like, oh, one 43-centimeter pizza is bigger than two 30-centimeter pizzas. Yeah? Well, yeah, because of the whole pie thing and how, yeah, it's more food, technically, even though it seems like it would be wrong if you know a little bit about math. Human, oh, this is the last one. Human saliva contains a natural painkiller called opiorphin, which is six times more effective than morphine. Additionally, Opiorphin can have both an anti-panic and an anti-depressive effect. 
So that's why mommies kiss their kids' boo-boos away. That's why dogs lick their wounds. It's 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 not just human saliva. It's it's a lot of animals have it. But um, you know, it just makes me think. Uh, you know, you could be a real creeper. Somebody gets a cut, and you're like, "Hey, let me lick that for you." <laughs> just slobber all over you. All right, let's see what else. I got so many of these lists saved. It's just I can just pick whichever ones I want here. You know, it's great. Well, we got to uh, hurt. Let me I'm move running away from the facts, though, because I've done enough of that, and I do have a lot. Of... Okay, you know what? I have one more fact thing, actually. It's right. 30 interesting facts about uh, the Marvel Universe. Ooh. Now, this is not just the movies. It's the comics as well. So. All of them. Yeah. It has been stated that when Wolverine is in berserker mode, everyone should run, including his friends. He almost killed Professor X while in berserker mode. Yeah, I remember reading about that. Yeah, when he goes crazy, it's like he doesn't even think. He just stab, stab, yeah. Daredevil can sense when Black Widow is in his apartment. He once said, truth be told, it's her heartbeat, one of my favorite sounds in the world. Oh, I mean, we're talking huh. about Scarlett Johansson here, right? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. In the Marvel Universe, Santa Claus is the most powerful mutant ever registered. He has even worn the Infinity Gauntlet in the past. How the hell he do that? Because as cool as the movies are, the comic can be kind of dumb sometimes. <laughs> Traditionally, the Black Panther can be challenged once a year by anyone in Wakanda. Whoever wins becomes or remains the Black Panther. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, that, that was in the movie, kind of, so... Yeah. Captain America once crushed the tendons in Wolverine's forearms so that his claws wouldn't work anymore. Wolverine still won the fight. Because <laughs> his claws are in his wrist, they're not in his hands. Well, yeah, but, I mean, he was saying that basically he made it so he couldn't pop his claws out anymore. Right. But, um, still was not able to win the fight. Tony Stark built a suit out of the magical Asgardian metal used to create Thor's hammer. It is known as the Iron Destroyer Armor. I wonder if it's indestructible. Well, the, the hammer isn't indestructible. You saw Thor Ragnarok, right? No, I haven't. Well, you saw the trailer, I assume. I avoid trailers. Oh, well. It, they kind of That's like the first thing they show in the trailer is the hammer getting destroyed. It's like the very yeah. first thing you see. Magneto is one of the very few people who is able to pick up Mjolnir without actually having to be worthy. He can control the electromagnetic fields around the hammer and use it against Thor himself. Huh. It's still metal, right? Yeah. Drax the Destroyer once punched a hole through Thanos' chest and ripped out his heart. Jeez. Imagine if Infinity War ends like that. Uh, we'll find out in a couple of months. I Drax is in in a couple of weeks. Couple? Wait, what? It's coming out in May. I thought Do Deadpool was coming out first. Uh, hold on. Let me find out when Deadpool's coming out. Because I just saw, like, another Deadpool trailer. Deadpool's coming out May 18th. Hell, I've already got... I've already Infinity got Thursday War. showings around here. Oh, wow. Infinity War is a lot sooner than I thought. It's next week. What? April 23rd. Fuck! Holy shit, that's coming. That's in six days. Holy shit. At the time well, of this recording, ladies and gentlemen. You know gentlemen. that Drax is in... Uh, by the way, um, Thanos' reaction in the comics to having his heart ripped out by Drax was interesting. He just, he just said, interesting. Pretty much. Deadpool can not only survive through nuclear explosions, reemerge after being burned to ash, and survive beheading, he also regularly donates internal organs to those in need, which immediately regenerate. So can I have his oh, liver? Wait, what writer came up with that? Because that's a Deadpool also has cancer throughout his whole body. But it's so healed. He no, it's, um, if you read the comic, his, his cancer has the healing, too. That's why uh, he's in constant pain, and that's also what drove him insane. 
Hmm. In order to avoid being rude and interrupting, Deadpool would sometimes shoot himself in the middle of a boring conversation. I've seen that. (laughs) In the comics, Doctor Strange once raised an entire city from the dead. Hmm. I don't think I read that one, but I wonder how the whole city died. Yeah. Um, Iceman is an Omega-level mutant with vast control over ice. He once froze all of hell. Uh, that's kind of... That's his thing. Like, wasn't most of it already frozen, though? Not in the Marvel version of Hell is usually the whole fire and brimstone thing. Oh, never mind, then. You're thinking of Dante's Inferno. Yep. All of Deadpool's body parts that he'd lost over the year once found each other and formed to get back together to become one which created an evil Deadpool. I read that, and it was hilarious. (laughs) <laughs> it does sound hilarious it's like oh you chopped us off now we're back together yeah he was like wait a minute i remember losing that head <laughs> <laughs> professor x once tried to read and control deadpool's mind it made him brain dead <laughs> I'll do it. you know professor x has got to just stay out of people's mind he once tried to do that to magneto and he wound up becoming like a demon or something don't do that man As a child, Bruce Banner was abused by his father. His father was an alcoholic, and he beat Bruce because he was scared of his intelligence. Well, anyone who saw the Ang Lee movie might know that, because that is is true. Yeah. Peter Parker once got mind-swapped with Wolverine by Jean Grey. Rather than trying to switch back, Logan decided to best use of Peter's teenage body is to try to bang Mary Jane. (laughs) <laughs> it, yeah I, that's actually from the ultimate comics which are not around anymore but the ultimate version of wolverine is a total pedo Jeez. and the, the reason that Jean gray did that was because wolverine wouldn't stop hitting on her she was 15 and he's like what 110 uh it was before the civil war so at least 180 no, he wasn't in the Civil... He was in the Spanish Civil War. Oh. Which was in the uh, 19th century. Stanley was actually very nervous that blind people would find his Daredevil comic series offensive or parodical and was prepared to cancel it. Upon its release, however, he received fan mail praising the handling of the subject and asking him to contribute to charities for the blind. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, Daredevil once said that Deadpool smells like Sriracha, Gunpowder, and Sadness. Ouch. I can believe that. that. Sucks. <laughs> uh, Peter Parker has two cell phones, one with his civilian contacts and one with his superheroes on speed dial. Johnny Storm is listed in both under Flaming Idiot. <laughs> Uh, Deadpool invited every Marvel character to his wedding. Deadpool number 27 broke the Guinness World Record for the most recognizable comic book characters on a single front cover. Cool. The Hulk is actually able to see ghosts, making him one of the few characters to be able to see Doctor Strange's astral form. Well, M. Night Shyamalan, your kid just went out the window. There you go. Hulk smash puny ghost. Thor and Hercules once arm wrestled with such raw strength that they could send the planet out of orbit. Probably not the best idea. It doesn't say who won. I still say don't try it. (laughs) Yeah, right. After 9-11, the villains Doctor Doom, Doctor Octopus, Kingpin, Juggernaut, and Magneto gathered to help the city recover. I thought that was yeah. an interesting. Com- that was the com- the Spider Man comic after nine eleven, where they kind of dealt with it because you know it does take place in New York City, and they had to address it. And I could see a lot of those guys because a lot of them don't see themselves as villains. But the Juggernaut, that was a bad inclusion. Yeah, because he's just one. He just one. He's a guy who, wants, who just wants to go fast, and that's it. The Juggernaut once knocked over the World Trade Center for fun. Dick. So. That's why they shouldn't have included him. Spider-Man's Spider-Sense is weaker when it's snowing. It is also confirmed that in Avengers Infinity War, he will have his Spider-Senses. Cool. Uh, I guess what... I never saw Homecoming, but did they address it in that? 
They didn't go into the spider sense in Homecoming, but if you saw, well, you said you don't watch trailers, but they show the Infinity War trailer and it shows um, the hair on his arms raising up when Thanos enters the atmosphere. Ah. Wolverine was once torn to pieces and eaten by the Hulk before regenerating inside the Hulk's stomach and clawing his way out. Jeez. It's always great when those two fight. A lot of people don't know. Wolverine was actually created as a one-off character for the Hulk to fight. And I then, guess the fans just enjoyed him too much. No, actually, it, it, it wasn't a very well-received comic. The reason that he, was, uh, he became famous is when they were looking for new characters to put in the X-Men, somebody decided to be lazy and use this, like, just this guy that appeared in, like, one Hulk comic once. And uh, they were way better at making Wolverine interesting, so. <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man's spidey sense wakes him up just before his alarm goes off. God, that's got to suck every day. Sounds like me. I'm so paranoid that I'm not going to hear my phone go off that I wake up. Oh, God. Venom's Achilles heel is chocolate. It temporarily calms him and cures his lust for brains. I should remember yeah. that. Uh, there, there's some sort of enzyme in brains that um, helps him kind of stay centered. That's why Venom was eating brains originally, but... Uh, they found that the same enzyme is in chocolate bars, so he went from being a brain munching <laughs> zombie Spider Man clone to a chocoholic. <laughs> According to Stan Lee, Spider Man wears a mask so his enemies can't see his fear. Yeah, that makes perfect sense because he was like what, like fifteen years old when he was first became Spider Man, so Yeah, fifteen, sixteen, something like that. Marvel have said the new Iron Man comics will be like Rick and Morty meets Black Mirror. Oh, please don't do that. That sounds Please like don't. Don't. Why don't you just make it like the Iron Man movies that we love? Exactly, because, I mean, Rick and Morty is fucking cancer. Yeah, I said I, it. You know, I don't mind Rick and Morty. It's a decent enough show, but the fan base, they ruin it. They, they ruin it. I can't enjoy the show anymore because I just think of a bunch of knobs slurping down terrible McDonald's sauce, you know? Exactly. Like, stop it. Stop ruining things. Venom once saved a baby and then yelled at the parents for being irresponsible. <laughs> and if anybody read the comics that Venom was in, that is absolutely in his character to do that. Wade Wilson's childhood hero was Captain America. Because of this, and due to a bond formed through both of them being government experiments, Steve Rogers is one of the only Marvel characters to treat Deadpool with respect. Good on him. Yep. Peter Parker makes perfect pancakes because his spider senses let him know exactly when to flip them. Okay, now it's gone too far with the spider sense. That's pretty much a bit ridiculous. Thanos has a subconscious belief that he isn't good enough, which holds him back from unleashing his full power. That's dark. Yeah. Well, he's a fucking dark character. Exactly. Uh, and this is the last one. Pe oh, I remember this comic, too. Uh, Peter Parker once visited a young, terminally ill boy named Tim after learning that he was a huge fan of Spider-Man. Peter even went as far as to reveal his identity to Tim so he could pass away having known his hero better than any other fan. Hell, seeing that, that would have given me new life to want to say, Hey, I met Spider-Man! <laughs> yeah, but the kid was... I forgot what disease he had, but he was, he was on the way it, out. It was you know? bad, yeah. Yeah, that was a really good comic. Uh, I forget when it came. I think I'm in the 80s or so. It was a really good one. Um, out of uh, how many were there? 30, I think. Yeah, out of 30, I'm going to say 25. I'll say 21. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, I think we got time for one more if it's a short one. Yeah, something that's got like 10. Okay, maybe. Well, this one has six. So. Okay, that'll work. It's uh, six times kids brutally ro roasted adults with some harsh honesty. Ooh. Number one. I was co-teaching some classes, and this little girl hugged my leg and said, Miss Ashley, I love you, but Miss Lisa is so much prettier. Your husband should marry her. Oh, dick! Wow. Oh, that's great. Okay, number two. I was doing the Step Up for Kids, which is an 82-floor stair climb up the Aeon Center in Chicago. About oh. halfway up, I paused and said to one of the kids lapping me, Wow, you are doing way better than I am. She responded back with, Yeah, and I have cancer. 
Got my second oh. win. Oh, wait. Got my second win right there and flew past the little shit. Not really, but it did motivate me to shut up and finish. <laughs> <laughs> Set that. <laughs> I don't know if I should say savage or good on her. Both. Yes. Okay. Number three. Daddy, when we hit the waves, your boobies bounce. <laughs> well, look. I'm sure any overweight guy, I'm an overweight guy, you're an overweight guy. Yes, we have boobies, and sometimes they bounce. Jiggle, jiggle. Nothing wrong with it. Number four. Daddy, mommy is too pretty for you, and I love her more than you. I mean, she's right, but still, little shit, three-year-olds, man. <laughs> Number five, I'm a teacher and once had a fourth grader ask if I was married. I pulled out my phone and showed her my wife's Facebook profile. She proceeded to tell me that I was too ugly for my wife and that I was finding girls on Facebook and saying they were my wife. She told all the kids on the playground that I'd been at the school for two weeks. My authority had was utterly destroyed. You know, here's how this could have been avoided. Hey, are you married? Yes. No taking out the phone, none of that shit. You there, Peyton? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, you're not making any sounds, that's why. And finally, number six, my daughter is my clone. She found a pic of me as a kid and thought it was her. Cried when she realizes that she looks that much like me. Sigh. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, anyway, um, out of six, uh, six, savage. Six. Absolutely savage. Um, that being said, uh, that's all, folks, for List Critics. See you guys real soon with List Critics 2. I just got to talk to Jesse about when we're going to record, and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for more great content. Later, taters. Indeed.